On this episode of Double D, I finally get the 700X off the back burner. So I ordered some new sprockets and a new DID chain. And we're going to get it all back together. Also in this video today, we're going to be putting on the tail tidy kit because uh, my tail light assembly is completely destroyed. So to start, you're going to take off your clip for your master link. I just use pliers. That's my easiest method. There's other ways on getting it off too, but whatever works for you, I guess. So I thought it'd be smart just to loosen up the nuts on the sprocket here. Just so it'd be easier than having the wheel off and trying to do it that way. So my stock mirrors, they're kind of bent from all the crashes I've done over the years. So I'm going to borrow some from my T-Dub for now just to get by. Oh yeah, these are hooked pretty good. <laughs> Oh, shit. Oh, I got it. Okay. Yeah. I just used a stove cleaner to clean the area, just whatever I had lying around. But uh, once I got it all clean, I put the new sprocket on and I put a little bit of Loctite too, so just for some reassurance. Oh. Durr. <laughs> <laughs> it's an automatic. Ooh, look at that thing. So I got everything off of sprocketcenter.com and it was really convenient. The chain is actually the same size as the old one. What's up, man? Hey, I got some soup here. It's cold. Oh, you didn't have to get me anything. It's uh, got cheese in it. I didn't know. Oh, so I appreciate it, man. Figured you could use it. Hell yeah. How's the bike coming? So the last year and a half, I've been rocking this setup. I destroyed my taillight assembly on a trip I did to Vegas from Washington. And uh, my whole taillight assembly got engulfed in the tire and exploded. So this is my setup just to be illegal. So unfortunately it got really dark when I put this on, but basically it's held on by four mounting bolts and the wiring, I set it up in my own preference and it's a lot better than what I had for sure. I like the look of it a lot. After all that dicking around the last few days, I just wanted to test ride it on the track, but knowing my luck, there's always going to be something wrong. I was thinking last night, I was like, I should probably plug it in because the lights has been on for a minute. Like, nah, it should be all right, but yep, battery's dead. So waiting for my battery to charge up, I took a nice little rip around the place with my lawn board. It's one of my favorite hobbies next to riding motorcycles, of course, and it's just a cheap and simple hobby. Something I need right about now. It's gonna get this thing rolling again. I kinda like the look of the T-Dub mirrors on this better than what I have on the stock mirrors on this. It just rained a day and a half ago, so hopefully this loose sand's not too bad. Out on the test track here. Oh! I got the Shinko 705s on. It's a 50-50 tire, I think. <laughs> it's managing, but it's, it's struggling. It's good to get this thing out again. It's been a been on the back burner um it's just my it, the t-dub it's it's my favorite bike so it's just more ideal to ride the t-dub out on this stuff than this big bike but it it'll manage <laughs> yeah for those who don't know much about the 700x this is the dct version it's automatic so you put it in drive and it shifts for you. So we had a good test lap with the 700X. Nothing happened, of course. And um, so let's get it out and actually go ride now. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, so uh, <laughs> I didn't have a, a chain riveter. So I, I made a homemade chain riveter and it's worked pretty well. Chain's still on, so. <laughs> 
I was thinking about that the whole time. I was, I was cruising at 80 on the way here. It's like, oh boy, <laughs> is this <laughs> It's kind of stressing me out. But um, I'm at this spot where I usually ride the T-Dub. Um, nice day out here. Snow's beautiful in the mountains. I always wanted to try to ride this little sand hill on this thing. <sighs> All right, let's do it. <laughs> All right, that actually wasn't too bad. It was actually kind of fun. Coming from the other side. Okay. <laughs> okay, I kind of want to do this again. Momentum. Momentum. Ah! <laughs> I lost my momentum. Okay. Oh, gosh, that was fun. So this bike it has the gas tank underneath the passenger seat and it's got this nice huge trunk where the gas tank should be. And it creates a, such a low center of gravity where the bike feels a lot lighter than it actually is. Yeah, this bike is pretty capable. As long as you take it slow over the rough stuff, it'll handle basically just about anything but you got to keep in mind too you don't have much of a ground clearance like I'm surprised I didn't bottom out going over that but yeah it doesn't have much ground clearance but like I said as long as you go slow over the tactical stuff this bike it'll take you a long way it's not like the t-dub where it'll go anywhere but it's it's very capable bike still so the NC stands for new concept. So basically Honda decided to mix a touring bike in with a dual sport bike and this is what they got. It's a really capable bike and it's really nice on the highway too. It can just sit at 80 all day long, no problems and super smooth too. You can't even feel the engine vibrate. Let's hit up these dunes. Um, I always wanted to try with this bike too, ride these dunes. So the T-Dub and the 700 here, they're completely different bikes, but in a way they're very similar. They're both actually, this bike's actually really slow and a T-Dub's slow. For a 700, this thing is kind of slow. It, it like, it, it'll sit happily at 80 miles an hour all day long, but that's about as much oomph as it has, as much power as it has, what I meant to say, but yeah, this, this bike's not made to be fast. It's just made to be efficient and more of an everyday kind of bike, not a, not a 100 mile an hour plus bike. It does do like 105, I, I found that out, but uh, that's about as fast as it'll go with the stock gearing. These tires, they, they're pretty good in the sand actually. The Shinko 705s, you just gotta get the momentum up and start like cruising over it, then, it, then it's pretty good. You just gotta stay out of the ruts too. Uh, oh gosh. But then once all the weight shifts to the front tire, that's when he crashed, like how I almost did right there. I should have a flag. It's no one's here right now. So I should be good. Just, just got to pay attention to my surroundings, I guess. All right, should I, <laughs> should I ride the dune here? All right, let's, let's try it, I guess. I don't got the power. I don't, I don't, I mean, I got the power, I just don't got the momentum and the grip. I like that tail tidy, it looks pretty nice. Um, so a quick little story here, I'll try not to ramble on too much. I took this bike from Washington State, kind of by the Canadian border, all the way to Las Vegas like two years ago. And um, I got there all right. The only really main problem I had with my battery terminals came loose like 15 miles outside of Vegas but that was an easy fix but uh other than that it was a nice ride but out by the NASCAR track they have sand dunes like this and I took this bike out here and had the stock uh whatever you call it the brake light and the brake light assembly and I went over a dune and the whole thing got sucked into the wheel and exploded and I lost my plate in the process that same day. So 
I had a, I probably got some pictures floating around still of what, what I had to do just, just to get home. I went to O'Reilly's and just bought a cheapo brake light and um, used the same wiring. And I bought these, actually reused these on the tail tidy here. Cheapo little blinkers, like five bucks each. And that's how I got home. I just, I put up my license plate information in a little plastic bag. And I got followed once by the cop, but I think he understood what was going on. So he just let me off. He just passed me, but <laughs> it, was, it was funny. It's kind of a, not the greatest adventure at the time, but looking back at it now, it was a really good adventure. The only really downside was I was in a huge time crunch to get down there. They gave me two days to get down there, which is long days of riding. Let's uh, keep rolling here. I feel like I'm pushing my luck. <laughs> oh, suspension isn't too good on this thing. It's like a almost as bad as a stock T dub. Actually, it is probably worse than a stock T dub. T dub. I, this is fun, man. Yeah, as, it, as long as it goes slow over the rough stuff, this bike will go just about anywhere. Not like the T-Dub cam, but it's still pretty capable. Let's ride up this, uh, let's ride up this face here. Woo. No issue. Oh my god, no dude. No! <laughs> Let's not do that. That's why I gotta pay attention out here. I could probably ride down it, but nah. Because once all the weight shifts to the front wheel, especially on this bike, it's just gonna sink in and I'm gonna crash. The only true downside here this bike's a heavy pig. Not go that way. Backing up. <laughs> I don't want to bury this thing. <laughs> Keep rolling. Keep rolling. I'm buried. <sighs> Knew this is a bad idea. All right. <laughs> I might have to put this bike on its side. Then uh, spin it out. Yep. Okay, now I'll lift this heavy thing. Okay. Huh. If you're gonna be dumb, you gotta be tough. All right. Let's get out of here. Come on. Woo. Okay, let's get out of here. Okay. <laughs> Woo. All right. Let's get out of this place. Um, this is not the road, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> this is exactly kind of what I, what I was trying to do. So if you go on YouTube and you look up NC700X off-road, there's really nothing out there. I, I made a video a long time ago of one of the sand Sundays we did. And um, 
it, there's like a handful of videos of like maybe a, like not many but no one really takes these off road so i wanted to be i wanted to be that guy to show the people the capabilities of the thing off road it's actually not a bad bike it's got the low center of gravity and uh kind of pretty low front gear too kind of not like the t-dub but it's pretty low for the first gear yeah it's a it's a good little bike let's follow this trail okay let's follow this trail away so probably lead back to the entry point cruising 30 miles an hour over this no issues people back there they're looking at me like what the hell are you doing out here on a street bike <laughs> so back on pavement heading up to Lone Pine it's realizing like dollar for dollar this is probably the one of the best adventure bikes money can get right here Ooh, it's beautiful out here oh I'm going really fast I'm going like 40 man I'm so glad I came up here it is beautiful out today this ride this thing on the 395 makes me not want to take my teed up on the 395 anymore. It's just a perfect bike for it. It's it's smooth, like the twin cylinder is super smooth. When you're, you're just sitting at 80, you can't even hear the bike, it's so quiet. It's honestly the perfect commuting bike. It's so quiet, I can hear the voices in my head when I'm going down the interstate or the highway here. Even though this is a very short road, it is hands down one of my favorite roads to go down in this state so far. It's just so pretty. And then I saw this really weird, huge pile of ice. I don't know how that formed from all these sprinklers, but I just thought that was really funny. Never seen anything like it in my life. This is something every motorcyclist could enjoy right here. This road is just awesome. It's like some magical place, like where Ridgecrest is down the road. It's dry. It's it's fun. Don't get me wrong. If you got a dual sport, it's fun. But you don't got scenery like this. This is some magical place. Almost. This corner right here is the corner I hit 10,000 miles on my T Dub. But it feels good to be back here today. Man, this place is just so pretty. Got a nice little waterfall going on down here a lot of snow melt right now the streams are full again it's about time it was really good to be back out here again without any major catastrophes i'll explain more at the end of the video but um mentally too it just felt good to be back out on the bike again all right once again gopro's dead of course and i'm parked really weird but uh <laughs> let's go check out this little mine we're really about to go in here if no flashlight. Oh gosh. This is creepy. I'm just stop scared, guess. It doesn't, okay. I'm, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it one bit. <laughs> yeah, I don't really, <laughs> screw it. I'll peek my head around the corner. Gosh. <laughs> I've seen too many horror movies. I know a good cave I can I can go inside. I actually ride inside nearby, so I might do that today if I've got time. Alright, so my scene is dead and my GoPro batteries are quote unquote dead. But um phone's still going. I didn't bring my uh, USB charger, but uh I don't really plan on recording a lot on the phone today. We'll see though. Even though my GoPro is having problems, I still managed to get a couple more minutes out of it until it quit all together. But the ride up Whitney portals was something else tonight. It was just amazing. Oh boy. This is interesting. 
fortunately it continued. I gotta wait for these guys to get out of the way. I might just turn around. I don't know what plan this guy has in store, but uh, I don't know what the hell he's doing. <laughs> yeah, when this four runner's having problems, it's a sign for me to turn around, so. <laughs> Really tempted to unbolt the passenger seat, use it as a sled here. That'd be pretty fun. <laughs> Might do that actually. Actually, now that I think about it, I think the trunk lid will make a better sled yet. It's pretty slick. <laughs> so the trunk lid would have made a perfect sled, but I didn't want to damage the dual dork sticker. So uh, the plan was to take the passenger seat off, see if how that would work. So long story short, the trunk lid makes a better sled and uh, passenger seat isn't too good as a sled, but it works in a pinch though, I guess. So after showing the locals my insanity here, I packed up, put my seat back on and I uh, went back into Lone Pine, got some food and went to this nice little park and ate there. All right, time to get out of here. Thank you guys for watching this video. It was a really good adventure today, actually. Um, so... <laughs> It's, I know it just kind of went from Lone Pine to me sitting in my camper, but uh, yeah, it got dark and I wanted to get home quick, so I didn't really, f I just took the 395 home. I didn't stop at any places to ride off-road, but yeah, I got home right as it got dark, so it was good timing. So uh, finally, the update on the T-Dub here, so uh, I'll try not to ramble too much, but so took it out to Vegas two weekends ago and long story short on my way back home the engine just totally just took a shit on me and exploded internally <laughs> I have the videos my dad sent me when they tore it apart and um it's pretty horrific okay kid ain't looking good these are supposed to line up up and down and they're on an angle so thinking the rod broke because it did hit the hit the valve the valve stuck and bent get your wallet out kid no he did good i i dustin john says you did bad but i say you did pretty good there's your piston and there's the bent rod uh looks like the rod's junk the cylinder's junk Pistons junk, valves are junk. All junk. You're all junk. Um, we're thinking about welding a chain on it right here and using it as a boat anchor. All right. There's a rag over there. All right, bud. We're looking in the bottom of your motor, and uh, we got lots of parts and pieces. We got a case broke too, I guess. Where's yes, the case sir. broke? Oh, we got a case crack too. Why are they catching them? Yeah. You got a few parts down in the bottom. <laughs> yeah, she's uh she needs a little work. Yeah, she she needs a little work, buddy. This one this one's used up. And this one's uh yeah, we might make a boat anchor out of it. We're not sure yet. So I'll uh I'll give you some more uh bad news later and what it's going to cost but all right be careful there's uh right, lots of parts and pieces there's part of your piston yeah crazy yeah so i'm that person with really bad luck when it rains it pours last year is a transmission that blew up on my truck when i was moving here and this year exactly a year later it's now the t-dub engine that blew up on me so fortunately for me I know I'm already paying a couple hundred bucks for parts and stuff, but in reality, at least it's not like a GS or whatever where parts is extremely expensive just for a basic part. I just ordered a whole bottom end on eBay for 250 bucks and it's got the transmission, all the gears included, but I probably have to order bearings with it too. But uh, my dad, he bought a top, a used top end for it. So the cylinder, I mean, so. Honestly, it's it's gonna cost me and it's gonna cost us a lot of money to get it back, but in reality it could be a lot worse. Um I really appreciate you, Dad and John, for uh 
tearing into my engine. It really means a lot. I can't do it myself, unfortunately. I just don't have the time or the space or... Yeah, just working outside, too, on a picnic table. I can't just be working on an engine when there's random sandstorms that pop up throughout the day. <laughs> and it's starting to rain here again. So, in the near future... Um, I'm going to be doing uh, California BDR. I'm really excited about that. My friend Lawrence from Washington, he's coming down, and we're going to be doing that together. So it was going to be us and Grizzly, another YouTuber up in Washington. You definitely got to check out his channel. He's got some good stuff on his channel. Uh, Grizzly, he's helped me out in the past at the tail end of the Wabiter. Uh, my 700, I was, I was coming back in with a of a nail in the tire and uh, I didn't have a plug kit and it, it was late it was we're coming through Marble Mount probably around 11 p.m. and we're all just exhausted and Grizzly really helped me out he uh, plugged up the tire for me and we still talk to this day so he's a good guy but unfortunately Grizzly can't do it this time around but uh me and Lawrence are gonna be doing it for sure we're gonna start at a uh, March early March time frame um also, if you're really interested in doing the Wabiter, I mean not Wabiter, California BDR with us, check out the Teeny Weeny Facebook group for more information on that. It's a Facebook group I created just to, so you can get a hold of me or people can post bike pictures if they live local, whatever. But uh, yeah, it's a Teeny Weeny T-Dub group. So uh, thank you all for sticking around for the T-Dub update and a uh, short-term channel update i guess <laughs> but uh y'all have a good one now and hopefully this video will be up sunday the internet here is terrible so i might have to go to walmart just to upload this video but yeah i'll be getting a 700x out more i'm trying to challenge myself on other things and i need to get a skid plate for it too i really need to get one of those but uh yeah y'all have a good one now